hey guys in today's video i'm going to show you everything i know about sugaring without really focusing on a specific body part just the principles now if you guys have not seen i actually have three videos in the diy sugar wax playlist now in my foolproof diy cold wax video i showed you guys how to make a soft firm hard and strip wax so if it's your preference to use your sugar cold then all you have to do is grab a tub and prepare to scoop now if you're using the soft formula you can generally scoop it right out of the container and get ready to get started and the same thing goes for the firm wax this is one that's relatively soft because i just made it prior to filming but if your sugar is quite cold aka room temperature and it's moldable but pretty firm you can also feel free to microwave it if you have a container that has a lot of sugar in it i would recommend that you start at 10 seconds and go up in 10 second intervals so this one i microwaved for a total of 20 seconds but if you don't have a microwave you could either use the double boiler method or you could even use a wax plate or a candle warmer like the one that I have here. Just keep in mind that this may take a little bit more time, or if you're using a strip wax like this one, then you should be able to scoop it straight out of the jar. Again, no heating required. And I did get a few questions about this, but I did not measure the temperature when I made this, so I am in the process of recreating it. But if you've made the firm wax, then you'll probably notice that it is almost completely solid. Now with this tub specifically, I found that this container is awesome for releasing the sugar um, by just simply pinching it. So I'm able to pop out this hard sugar and put it into a wax warmer. So if you have a wax warmer, warm your sugar and just go up slowly until you reach body temperature or something slightly warmer that does not burn your skin. I will put a little graph to help you kind of better understand what pace may work better for you in what climate. Just don't be limited by this chart and use whatever pace looks good to you. So the first thing that you need to consider before sugaring is making sure that you have exfoliated your skin. This does not need to be the day of. In fact, I actually recommend that it's like the day prior or really just sometime within the last three to four days prior to the service. And to do that, I like to use my DIY coffee scrub. Now, the reason that I prefer this one especially is because it's nice and coarse and it's not gonna dissolve in water like sugar would. And the reason that this is so important, especially for me, is because I have strawberry legs also referred to as chicken skin, which is a condition called keratosis pilaris. This essentially means that I have dark marks where all of my hair follicles are or that I'm susceptible to ingrown hairs. So my hair often gets trapped under a layer of dead skin. So as you can imagine, exfoliating is really important because it makes sure that all of the hair is actually available and free for the sugar to grab onto and effectively pull out. KP is pretty common, especially with people who have dry skin. And sometimes I do have to use a blackhead extraction tool to free some of these areas as you can see here. So the skin can be pretty stubborn, which is why I also like to dry brush. With this, you use a natural fiber dry brush onto dry skin, which you're actually able to do on a daily basis. This improves the texture of your skin and also has a lot of other health benefits too. But if you guys wanna know more about that, I can put that as well as how to treat KP in another video. Just leave a comment below. So now you've got your pace, let's go over some basics, which I like to call the prequel. You first wanna start off with clean skin. So assuming that you have already showered at some point during that day, to treat the area that I'm about to work on what i will do is use a clarifying toner this will clear the skin of any residual oil or lotion because sugar is not going to stick to any of that follow that up with a powder the most common one used is a baby powder however the main ingredient in baby powder is cornstarch so yes you can just use cornstarch or you could substitute and this will absorb any excess moisture from the skin be it from the toner that you just used or from sweat so you do want to keep this nearby because people do normally sweat when they're either nervous hot or in pain and the last thing that you want to do is just kind of evaluate your skin and your hair growth however if you don't have good visibility or you're just not quite sure what you can do is lightly brush your fingers over the area and the direction that you feel the most resistance meaning you feel the hair kind of standing up that's the direction that you want to go in when you apply your sugar so i'm first going to take you guys through a quick review of the application process 
You guys can clearly see which direction that the hair is growing in. So when sugaring, you want to apply in the opposite direction. So I'm applying the sugar against the hair growth and you'll notice that I do this in two to three swipes. And in sugaring, this is what's referred to as molding. You want to mold the sugar into the hair two to three times. Then when you go to remove it, you pull in the direction of hair growth. And here I'm using a strip so that you guys can see the aftermath. So after removing the hair, what you can expect to see is usually lots of hairs that have a bulb on the end. And this is the root of the hair. However, don't be alarmed if you don't see them because the thing that you also have to remember is that all of the hairs on one given area of your body can be growing at a different stage. So not all of your hair is maturing in the same amount of time. And after pulling, you may even notice that you've missed a few hairs. This could simply be just because the hair is not quite long enough, so you can simply tweeze or thread them. And I want you guys to really take note of how much of the hair is actually sitting beneath the surface of the skin. There's quite a lot of hair structures going on underneath the skin. So unlike shaving, which just cuts the hair off right at the surface, the sugar melts down into the follicle or pore, wraps around the hair shaft, and then pulls it out from the root in its entirety. To go from the base it has to grow all the way back up to the surface of the skin this is why you're able to be hairless for up to two to three weeks so that was just an overview now let's really dig in and go over the full application process again so to remove your sugar from the container although you can use a popsicle stick or a spatula you can also just go right in with your hands so if you are a professional then you're most likely using gloves which makes this process a little bit easier and the general motion that you're going to use is you're going to direct most of the sugar to your three main fingers and you're going to swirl with your thumb and this is how you basically keep control you can always just go in with a tongue depressor and just grab it with your hands from there now when molding the paste with your fingers, you're really gonna press it into the skin and you can really use the tips of your fingers. However, as you guys can see, my nails are a little bit longer. We're gonna mold the sugar two to three times and feel free to do more if you feel like it's necessary because remember, we really want the sugar to melt into the pour. Then when you're ready to remove the sugar, make sure that you use your free hand down on the skin to press or grab the skin to make it taut or tight. This is also very important because it will prevent bruising. Then with my molding hand, I also press down slightly and then flick my wrist, making sure to keep my hand perpendicular to the area of the body that I'm waxing. And when you flick, you have to flick the sugar like you mean it because remember, we're using enough force to pull the hair out completely from the root. The process of waxing alone has naturally aerated the sugar and changed the color. So technically, you don't have to knead prior to using it. So in case you don't want to preheat or microwave, you may want to consider kneading it. Because as you can see, trying to mold cold sugar takes a little bit more time. So it will slow you down and possibly make this process longer. Which when you're waxing, you kind of don't really want to do. Because if it's painful, you really want to get it over with. So kneading your wax while it's cold is simply just going to make it more pliable. Your sugar will heat up from your body temperature. In fact, eventually it will get so warm that your sugar may start to get stuck. And I mean that quite literally. So to remedy this, what you can do is either use a strip as I showed in my original video, or what you can do is just take a fresh piece of sugar paste and you would mold this into the sugar as normal and proceed with your process. You can also do this before you notice that your sugar is even sticking. You can take a fresh piece of paste and just kind of work that into your ball. So if you didn't make a really big batch, this will stretch your quantity a little bit further. Or if it doesn't appear to be removing any hair, it could also just be because you have some moisture on the skin. That's why you want to make sure that you keep your powder close. So just sprinkle on a little extra dusting and continue working. Now, if you find this a little bit uncomfortable after you pull your hair out, what you can do is just apply your hand and put some pressure on the area that you just treated. This will really take away that burning or stinging. And you can keep your hand pressed there as long as you need to until the pain starts to alleviate.
Also, if you're a beginner and the whole concept of molding the paste into your hair is not comfortable to your hand just yet, what you can do is apply your paste in kind of a padding and smearing motion. Again, going in the opposite direction of your hair growth still, use your finger to kind of flick the end and pull your paste off like you would a strip. Another great technique for applying and removing your paste is also just using a popsicle stick or tongue depressor. This is great for larger areas and it's also really good for just catching some stray hairs that need to be quote unquote tweezed. And using a spatula or stick is also a really good way of making sugaring a little bit less messy if you really just don't like the idea or sensation of having the sugar on your hands. And last but not least, you can also use your sugar as a strip wax. You you can use any of the formulas that I've shown as a strip wax. So you can use the soft, firm, and hard waxes by simply heating them until they become a consistency for you to easily spread very thin. You should be able to see your hair quite easily through the application. Just keep in mind that the firmer the sugar, the more heat you'll need to apply to get it to a liquid state. Spread your sugar over the entire area and then you can simply use your wax strip. Remember that you need to have a bit of free space at the top so that you can actually grab it. So you wanna start from the top and work your way down. And because you have spread that sugar so thin, you can just continue to use that one strip. Just be sure to switch it out for a clean one once the sugar has started to build up. Now once you guys are done sugaring, you can simply throw your sugar ball away. If you are wearing gloves, you can just discard the entire glove. However, I do like to use bare hands because sugar is biodegradable. So when you are completely done sugaring, you can now wipe down with either water or the toner that you used in the beginning. Then I apply a soothing or calming oil. This is my aftercare balm, which I have a DIY for. And also I forgot to mention, if at any point you chicken out and you decide that you can't pull the sugar, you can completely just wash it away with water. And if you haven't already, please do watch the other sugaring videos because if you do have a question, I might have touched on it already. I will also list them in the description box. And just in case you guys didn't know, not only do I have everything linked in the description box, but I also have an Amazon page that literally has everything linked in it that I have used. It's not sponsored or anything. I do receive a small commission if you do purchase, but I just by default buy all of my supplies from Amazon because it's just convenient. <laughs> it gets to me quick, but also because I feel like it's the most accessible to you guys. If you can't find it on Amazon, chances are you can't find it anywhere. Make sure that you subscribe to this channel because it seems like I am regularly doing these sugaring videos, so um, I'm sure another one will come in the series like comment subscribe and i'll see you next week